So, this afternoon, we are still in our series on the book of Kevin DeYoung, um, Taking God as, at His Word. So, last time, we talked about the inspiration of the scriptures. And this afternoon, we will be talking about another um, characteristic of the scripture, which is, um, hindi, na, hindi dinideny ng maraming Christian, pero hindi rin nila pinapractice. And that is the sufficiency of the scriptures. When I was still a teenager, um, lagi ko nga pong naikikwento sa inyo that I came from a charismatic church. Madalas po akong umatend ng mga conferences. Yung mga conferences na may kinalaman sa mga gifts and prophecies. And yung isa sa mga conference na talagang patok na patok sa amin when I was still in college is this conference wherein three prophets were invited. Tanda-tanda ko pa sila, si Neville Johnson, si Sadu Salvaraj, at saka si Vincent Salvacomar. Um, sikat yun kasi si Sadu Salvaraj allegedly predicted the Typhoon Yolanda on 2013, sabi nila. And then si Vincent Salvacomar naman, sumikat siya sa amin kasi on the very event, nagkaroon siya ng fresh na prophecy. Habang nakakaroon ng program, may bumaba daw na isang anghel mula sa langit, na may dalang scroll. Tapos yung scroll na yon binuksan sa harapan niya, and then the scroll contains with it seven names of cities and municipalities. At yung mga cities and municipalities daw na yon doon daw magsisimula ang revival sa Pilipinas. And one of the places that was mentioned there is the municipality of Pateros, where I live. So hype na hype ako noon kasi inisip ko, ala, sa amin magsisimula ang Revival, baka ako na yung gagamitin ni God as a catalyst of the revival. Because of that, ang ginawa ko po ay nagpaprint ako ng entire transcript ng conference na yon. At paulit-ulit ko siyang binabasa, I was treating it like it is the Bible itself. And at that time, nagkakandak na po ako ng mga Bible study sa RTU. And hindi ko alam kung anong pumasok sa isip ko, pero may pagkakataon na naglida ko ng Bible study Nang instead na ginamit kong material is the Bible, ang ginamit kong material ay yung transcript noong ano na yon, Noong conference na yon. Actually, trivia lang. Isa din po sa nabanggit na lugar doon ay Cavite. Cavite, Cebu, Davao. Malay nyo, nagkamali lang pala ng prophecy yon, Baka ibig sabihin, revival ng reform churches yun. O, di ba? Hindi natin alam. Anyway, pagkatapos noon, College days ko pa rin, madalas kaming ma-invite sa mga worship services kung saan may mga prophecies, prophecies pa rin. Natatandaan ko, isang tawag dun sa inatinan, inatinan ko ay soaking in the river. Soaking in the river because it's like soaking in the presence of God. So it's non-stop worship service and then every now and then, tatayo yung pastor sa harapan to give random prophecies. So minsan, tuturo siya sa isang tao, like kalimbawa, ikaw, yung nasa likod, pupunta ka sa Amerika. Ikaw yung nasa likod, aasenso ka sa buhay. But, yung pinaka-usual is, it's always random general prediction. Like for example, kapatid, nararamdaman ko sa lugar na ito, meron sa inyong may problema. Ama malamang, lahat tayo may problema. Tama po ba? Meron dito may mabigat na pinagdadaanan. So isipin mo, ako yun, may pinagdadaanan ako eh. Pero lahat naman ng tao talaga ay may pinagdadaanan. Pero looking back, Inasas ko yung sarili ko, bakit nga ba atat na atat ako na umatin ng mga conferences searching for a word from God? Pag sinabi natin a word from God, it is a special revelation from God. At that time, naniniwalan man ako sa Bible. I am teaching the Bible, I am quoting the Bible in my conversation with my friends. Pero at the back of my mind, may kulang pala. Unconsciously, na-realize ko that I don't believe in the sufficiency of the scriptures. Nasabi ko po na unconsciously, kasi hindi naman ako openly hostile to the idea of the sufficiency, sufficiency of the scriptures. Hindi naman ako nakikipag-debate at sinasabi sa ibang mga Kristiyano na, ah, hindi, hindi naman kumpleto ang Bible eh. Hindi ko sinasabi yun. For me, the Bible is complete. However, when it comes to my attitude on seeking for fresh new revelation, it shows na parang sa akin ay hindi pa pala kumpleto ang Bible. It's not sufficient. That's why I'm looking for a new or a higher revelation na makakatulong sa akin bilang isang 
Kristiyano. Now, in Hebrews 1, 1 to 14, the author of the book tells us that although God spoke to His people through different means and agents long ago, in these last days, God has spoken to us through His Son. And because God has spoken through the supreme agent of revelation, who is also the revelation himself. Hindi na po tayo dapat nag expect pa ng iba pang mga agents of revelation na magdadala sa atin ng mga word from God or ng mga fresh or new revelation. So that is something that we will discuss this afternoon. So for our sermon this afternoon, we will be discussing two points. Number one is God's Supreme Son. And then number two is the sufficiency in the Son and in the scripture. But before that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for sustaining us, protecting us, even though hindi masyadong favorable ang weather uh, this morning. Salamat sa patuloy na pag-iingat sa amin at sa pagbibigay sa amin ng opportunity to study about your word and to discuss this topic about the sufficiency of the scriptures. I pray that you help me uh, explain your word thoroughly efficiently at sana ma-communicate ko ng maayos sa congregation mo yung gusto mong iparating sa kanila and may you give us open and humble hearts as we listen to your word this afternoon in Jesus name we pray amen so our text this afternoon is Hebrews 1 1 to 4 so basahin ko po muna ang Hebrews 1 1 to 4 long ago at many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets but in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed the heir of all things, through whom also He created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature, and He upholds the universe by the word of His power. After making purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. That is Hebrews 1, 1 to 4. So, the text that we have just read is what we call an exordium. Pag sinabi po natin exordium, it is an introduction. Kumbaga, sa constitution, it is the preamble. Nag-feedback? Feedback. Okay. Maririnig niyo po ba ako pag di ako nag-mic? Hindi. Sige, magmamike po ako. Kasi may feedback eh. Anyway, lalayo yata ako. Okay, so that is the exordium. Hebrews 1, 1 to 4. At may kita po natin sa introduction mismo, meron na kagat tayong hint ano bang nilalaman ng buong book of Hebrews. And the main point of the book of Hebrews is that God has spoken through His Son. And His Son is the supreme revelation. And at the same time, He is the supreme agent of revelation. More supreme than the heavenly beings, than the prophets, rituals, institutions, and previous means of revelation and redemption. Now, if we are going to focus on the first two verses, makikita po kagad natin doon na merong glaring contrast between the long ago and then in the last days. Okay? Ulitin po natin ha, sa first two verses, may kita po natin yung mga contrast between the long ago and the last days. So ano po yung mga contrast na yun? Number one is the contrast in era. So verse one, it talks about, yun nga, long ago. Pag sinabi po natin long ago, this is the time frame wherein God the Father revealed His Word to the people in the Old Testament. So it was done through many ways, but mainly through the prophets. At ang lahat ng revelation na yun, it was put into writing. That's why the early Jewish people have the Old Testament. So that is long ago. But on the verse 2, may tinawag po dito na in these last days. Okay? Yung in these last days naman po ito, it's not talking about the end of the world. It's not talking about the apocalypse. But it's talking about the time frame between the first coming and the second coming of Christ. That is the time wherein we are living right now. So, yun yung tinatawag po natin, na Last days. Second contrast is the contrast on the recipients. So, sa verse 1, 
Ang sabi po dito, long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers. Okay? God spoke to our fathers. Pero para mas maintindihan po natin yan, tanungin po natin ang sarili natin, kaninong fathers? Okay? Kaninong fathers? Ang tinutukoy po dito are the Jewish patriarchs. Yung mga ancestors ng mga Jewish. Hindi po ancestors nating mga Pilipino, hindi po ancestors ng mga Gentiles, but specifically the Jewish patriarchs. On the other hand, on verse 2, ang sabi naman dito, in these last days, God has spoken to us. So ngayon naman po, ang kinakausap ni God are not a specific group of people or a specific race, but He is talking to us now. Kasama tayo mga Pilipino. In other words, God is also talking to the Gentiles. It's now both Jews and the Gentiles. Third, is the contrast in agent. Sino po ba yung agent of revelation na ginamit long ago in the Old Testament at sino naman yung sa in these last days? So long, long ago, ang nabanggit po dito sa Hebrews 1 ay the prophets. So usually, yung prophets po yung ginagamit ni God to communicate with His people. But later on, if we are going to jump on verse 4, may may kita pa po tayo dito isa pang agent of revelation which was contrasted with Jesus Christ. And those are the angels. Okay po, mga angels. Yes, I understand, wala pong angel na may authorship ng kahit na anong book sa Old Testament, but that is not the point. The point is, ginamit ni God ang mga angels in order to communicate with God's people. So, example po natin dyan ay si Daniel. Di po ba si Daniel, siya po ay kinausap ni Angel Gabriel. And even in the New Testament, Si Mary, the mother of Jesus, was um, encountered by Angel Gabriel as well nung sinabi sa kanya na magkakaroon siya ng anak. So, many instances in the Bible, God uses angels in order to communicate with His people. But, in the last days, sino na pong ginamit na agent of revelation? Isa lang. And that is the Son. It is Jesus Christ. And then lastly, is the number of ways by means God communicated long ago and in the last days. So long ago, in many times and in many ways. So maraming paraan po ang ginamit ng Diyos para maipag-communicate sa mga tao niya. It could either be through the burning bush, the pillar of fires, the appearance of angels, the writings on the walls, dreams and visions that is given through the prophets. But in the last days, there is only one means of revelation. And that is only through the Son. May kita po natin itong apat na contrast na to. The contrast in the era, the contrast in the recipient, the contrast in the agent, and the contrast in the number of ways by which the Word of God is revealed to His people actually points to one single conclusion. And the conclusion is that in the last days, God speaks through a superior agent of revelation and that is no other than Jesus Christ. Pero yung pagiging superior ni Jesus Christ as an agent of revelation and as the revelation himself will be further clarified and discussed in Hebrews 1, 1-4. So yun naman po ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon. So kanina, bago po tayo mag-start sa ating Vesper service, I hope naka-receive po kayong lahat ng maliit na papel na ito. Okay? Yung maliit na papel na po ito ay Hebrews 1, 1 to 4. Pero ang magandang pag-usapan po natin this afternoon is we have to discuss Hebrews 1, 1 to 4 according to its structure. At ano po ba ang structure ng Hebrews 1, 1 to 4? Ang tawag po dito sa structure na to ay kiasam. Or tinatawag natin na sandwich. So meaning to say, meron siyang layer, layer. Kung baga sa hamburger, meron siyang bun, tapos merong dalawang layer ng lettuce, tapos may hamburger sa gitna. At kapag ang pinag-uusapan po natin ay kiasam, ano po ang pinaka-importante sa sandwich? Siyempre yung gitna. Kasi kapo pag hamburger, wala siyang burger, ano po tawag natin doon? Tinapay. So ang importante po ay yung nasa gitna ng kiasam. So now let's look at Hebrews 1, 1 to 4 as a chiasm. Okay? So first, tignan po natin yung first 
layer of the sandwich. So, may first layer sa taas at may first layer sa baba. So, the first layer sa taas will be found in verse 1 up to the first phrase of verse 2. While the lower first layer is found in verse 4. So, basahin po natin sa inyong mga handouts yung upper layer. Long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. Now, on the lower first layer, it reads, Having become as much superior to angels as the name He has inherited is more excellent than theirs. So, ano po yung tema ng first layer ng sandwich? Ang tema po dito is that Jesus Christ is the supreme agent of revelation. Kasi kung mapapansin po natin, sa upper layer, may comparison siya with the previous agent of revelation, which is the prophet. Tama po ba? And in the lower layer, Jesus Christ was also compared with the previous agent of revelation, which is the angels. Pero paano nga ba naging supreme agent of revelation si Jesus Christ than the prophets and the angels? First of all, if we will compare them when it comes to their worth and their dignity. We all know that the prophets of, prophets of old are holy men of God. They are people of impeccable morality and righteousness. And the angels are heavenly beings na kapag nakita nyo sila in all their glory, baka matem ka na magpa, magpatira pa sa kanila and worship them. But compared to the Son of God, the Son of God, when He became a man, He became a perfect man. And although He is a man, we all know that He is still fully God, and in His Godness, no one can exceed His glory. So when it comes to the worth of Jesus Christ, and in His infinite dignity, He by far surpasses the prophets and the angels. And then aside from that, Jesus Christ is also supreme when it comes to the message that He carries. Okay? Hindi ko po sinasabi, na mas importante ang New Testament kesa sa Old Testament. Parehas pong importante ang nireveal na word ni God sa Old at sa New. Pero kung babasahin po natin ang Bible, alam po natin na yung revelation ni God is progressive. Tama po ba? Hindi lahat ng bagay ay naging malinaw sa Old Testament. In fact, kung malinaw ang lahat ng bagay sa Old Testament, dapat lahat ng Udyo, Trinitarian na ngayon. Pero hindi sila Trinitarian. Kasi yung nature ni God is not revealed with much clarity in the earlier revelations. Nagkamali rin ang mga Hudyo sa pagkaka-identify nila sa nature ng Messiah. Ang akala nila, the Messiah is just a mere man who is a military leader. At hindi nila nagets that the Messiah will be a suffering servant who is also the Son of God. At bakit sila nagkamali? Because the revelation from of old is not as clear as the revelation in the New Testament. So, may nangyayaring progression. Pero makikita natin that all of the revelations in the Old Testament, they all pertains or direct to Jesus Christ Himself. So, Jesus Christ do not only carry with Him a more clear message, but He is actually the message. He is not merely an agent of revelation, but He is actually the revelation. Because all of the prophecies in the Old Testament, all of the rituals, and all of the types, they all point to Jesus Christ. And it, that, in that way, we can say that Jesus Christ is the supreme agent of revelation. More supreme than the prophets of old, and more supreme than the angels. So that is the first layer. Now, pupunta naman po tayo sa second layer ng sandwich. Saan po natin makikita ang upper second layer? Ito po ay nasa second phrase ng verse 2. And then, the lower second layer is found in the second sentence of verse 3. Sa inyo pong table, ito po ay yung letter B. Okay po? So, basahin po natin yung upper first layer. Sabi dito, Whom He appointed the heir of all things. And the lower second layer says, After making purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty on high. So now, ano naman po yung sinasabi sa atin ng second layer of the piyasa? 
it tells us two things. Number one is that Jesus is the royal heir. He is the heir of all things. Actually, this is an allusion to Psalms 2.8. Ano po bang sinasabi ng Psalms 2.8? It says, Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. So ang tinutukoy po dito, ang kinakausap po ni God the Father dito na mag inherit ng all of nations and all of earth's possession is the Son. It is no other than Jesus Christ. But in Hebrews, nakaroon to ng step further eh. Dahil sa Psalms 2.8, God is also only pertaining to the nations and to the possessions of the earth. But in Hebrews, it talks about all things. So, mas all-encompassing yung magiging inheritance ni Jesus Christ because He is the royal Son of God. And then, the lower second layer of the sandwich is that Jesus Christ is the royal priest. At makikita po natin yun doon sa after making purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of majesty. So, sino lang po ba yung gumagawa ng purification for the sins? It is only the priest. Nakita po natin yun sa Old Testament sacrificial system kung saan yung high priest ay nagsusunog ng mga lamb, ng mga bulls as a sacrifice for the purification of the sin of the people of Israel. But in the coming of Jesus Christ, we all know that that is merely a type of what Jesus Christ will do in the future. That He will live here on earth with a perfect life and at the end of His life, He will go to the cross and He who knew no sin will become sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God. On that cross, sinalo ni Jesus Christ yung punishment na para sa ating lahat. And in that way, He made a purification for our sin. But not only that, after He made a purification of our sin, ano pong ginawa niya? He sat down at the right hand of majesty, signifying His royal status. That's why Jesus Christ is not only a royal heir, He is also a priest, and He is a royal priest. Yun po ang sinasabi ng second layer ng kiasam. Now, let's go to the core of the kiasam na makikita po natin sa third phrase ng verse 2, so that is the upper layer, and then the first sentence of verse 3. So basahin po natin sa inyong mga tables. So the upper layer is, through whom also He created the world. And then the lower layer says, He is the radiance of the glory of God, and the exact imprint of His nature, and He upholds the universe by the word of His power. At ano po yung tema na ibinibigay sa atin nung burger, nung sandwich? Ang sinasabi po nito is that Jesus Christ is the divine wisdom. He is the wisdom of God. So malamang, kung hindi po kayo inaantok, baka tinanong nyo na po sa inyong sarili, asaan yung word na wisdom dyan, Brother Ed? Binasa natin, di ba? Asan yung word na wisdom dyan? Kung may tatlong bagay tayong makikita dito, is that Jesus Christ is an agent of creation. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. And that He is the sustainer of the created world. Pero walang sinabing wisdom. Asaan yung wisdom? Well, makikita po natin na yung pagiging agent of creation pagiging radiance of the glory of God at pagiging sustainer ng created world are all attributes of the divine wisdom of God. At saan po natin yun mababasa? Let's read in Proverbs 8:22 to 31 Medyo mahaba po ito, but please bear with me. Proverbs 8:22 to 31 This talks about the wisdom of God being the agent of creation. It reads, The Lord possessed me, wisdom, at the beginning of His work, the first of His acts of old. Ages ago I was set up, at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, 
Before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its field, or the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundation of the earth, then I was beside him like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in the inhabitant world, and delighting in the children of man. So sa binasa po natin, nung unang mga verses, para bang, yes, si wisdom, nandun siya nung ginagawa yung world, nung ginagawa yung mountains, yung springs, yung fountains, and the limitations of the sea. Pero mababasa po natin, doon sa verse 30, after I was beside him, ang sabi dito, like a master workman. So the wisdom of God is an agent of the creation of the entire universe. At may kita po natin that it echoes the creation account in Genesis 1. So that tells us that the wisdom of God is the agent of God's creation. So papaano naman po yung pagiging wisdom ni God ni Christ because He is the radiance of the glory of God. Ito po, nung ginagawa ko po itong sermon, feeling ko, baka maano po ako masita. <laughs> baka masita kasi I am going to quote something not from the scripture but from the apocrypha. Okay? Alam ko po na ang pinag-uusapan po natin is the sufficiency of the scripture. At kaya po, in ng mga reformers ang sufficiency of the scriptures is so that para labanan nila yung pagdadagdag ng Roman Catholic Church ng mga books doon sa Bible. Kasama doon yung apokripa and syempre, the tradition. But later on, in our application, I would like to emphasize that even though we believe in the sufficiency of the scripture, it doesn't mean that we have to fear traditions. It doesn't mean that we have to fear other historical accounts or other works of the previous Christians na ang totoo naman talaga can be used as um, as an aid for our interpretation of the scriptures. My point is, yung book of Hebrews po, ito po ay sinulat ng New Testament. Tama po ba? Yung apokripa, yung mga books ng apokripa, kadalasan po yan, ay, hindi kadalasan, all of them will be found in the Old Testament. And one of the books of Apocrypha na aking pong isasite ngayon is The Wisdom of Solomon. Dahil sabi po ng mga commentators, when they examine this text of Hebrews 1, 1 to 4, some of its texts were derived from The Wisdom of Solomon, verse 7. At babasahin ko po sa inyo ngayon yun. Verse 7, 25 to 26 reads, Wisdom is the breath of God's power. The true reflection of the glory of God, all-powerful, and so she cannot be touched by anything impure. Wisdom is like a mirror reflecting the eternal light of God's deeds and goodness. And if we are going to uh, read the Wisdom of Solomon 8.1, it says here, Wisdom rules the universe and keeps it in order. So may kita po natin, the wisdom of Solomon says that the wisdom of God is the mirror of the glory of God. Nakatulad ng pagsinabi natin that it is the exact radiance of the glory of God. And yung verse 8 naman, or yung chapter 8, which says, Wisdom rules the universe and keeps it in order. It talks about the wisdom of God sustaining the created order. So dun po nakuha, sabi ng mga commentators po ah, Doon nakuha ng author ng Hebrews yung idea that Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God because He is the radiance of the glory of God at the same time, the sustainer of the created world. Pero para po hindi nyo ko pagdudahan na baka ginagawa-gawa ko lang po ito at kumuha pa ako ng text sa Apokripa, sige po, uh, let us cite a New Testament uh, text which is John 1.1. 1. 
Sa John 1.1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So, the term Word in John 1.1, in, in Greek, is called the Logos. Alam ko po, it's not your first time to hear the term Logos. At yung term na Logos po, ito po, kapag tinranslate natin sa English, can be called the divine wisdom or the divine reason. Para po sa mga Greek philosophers, yung Logos o yung divine reason, it is the force that is behind the creation of the entire universe. But it was used by the Apostle John in order to describe Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity. So the Logos is not actually an abstract, impersonal force, but it is actually pertaining also to the wisdom of God, which is Jesus Christ. At binanggit po sa John 1.1 that all things were made through Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. It shows us that the Logos, the divine reason, is also an agent of creation. And then lastly, so verse 18, No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made Him known. It is the same thing as saying that the divine wisdom, Jesus Christ, is the exact imprint of God's nature. It is the radiance of the glory of God. Okay, so that is the kiasam. These are the sandwich of Hebrews 1, 1 to 4. In summary, Christ is supreme because He is the supreme agent of revelation. At the same time, He is the royal heir, He is the royal priest, and He is the divine wisdom of God. Pero siyempre, babalik tayo sa topic. Brother Ed, ano ngayon ang kinalaman niyan sa sufficiency of the scriptures? Well, ang connection po niyan is that because Jesus Christ is the supreme agent of revelation, at siya ang nag-complete ng revelation ng word ni God, wala na dapat iba pang dadating na mas greater sa Kanya. Di po ba? Kasi meron pong mga religion nang sinasabi nila, oh, the Bible is not complete. That's why we have to introduce another book. At meron din silang ini-introduce na another agent of revelation. So sa Islam, meron silang Muhammad na nagdala ng Quran. Sa Mormons, meron silang Book of the Mormons na dala naman ni Joseph Smith. Pero para masagot natin yan, ganito lang po yan mga kapatid eh. If the revelation of God in the Bible is not yet complete, dapat ang kukompleto nun is greater than the previous agent of revelation. Tama po ba? So kung may kukompleto nun, dapat yung kukompleto is greater than Jesus Christ. Pero ang problema, all of these people who are saying that they have fresh revelations from God, they cannot prove that they are greater than Jesus Christ. So let me just use this illustration to you. For example, dumating ang BTS dito sa Pilipinas at nagkaroon ng concert. So si Generous, baka ganun kagad, nakarinig lang ng BTS. Nagkaroon ng concert dito sa Pilipinas ang BTS. So alam po natin, nakapag-concert, merong mga minor acts or minor performances and then merong main act. So sa mga minor performances, malamang halimbawa, nag-invite sila ng mga local artists. Like, o oh, sige, kakanta muna si Tony Gonzaga, kakanta muna si Skustakli, o oh, kakanta muna, sino ba? Sasayaw muna ang SB19, o kaya ang SB Jensen, ganyan. After nyan, kapag hype na hype na yung mga tao, dadating na yung BTS. So kapag dumating na yung BTS, ayun na yung pinaka-main performance. Di ba? Saan po kayo nakakita ng concert na pagkatapos dumating ng BTS at na-entertain ng mga tao at palabas na sila, biglang dumating si Tony Gonzaga at pumunta ng, Catch me, I'm falling for you. Bakit ganun? Di ba? Hindi ganun ang takbo ng concert. Kapag dumating na po yung main act, yung main performer, it is illogical to introduce a minor artist or a minor act. Ganon din po sa revelation ng Bible. Because dumating na yung supreme revelation. Dumating na yung supreme agent of revelation. Bakit tayo ngayon mag ng lesser 
agents of revelation. That is the point. Ngayon po, kung sasabihin po natin na, Brother Ed, eh pag ganyan ang view natin, we are limiting the Holy Spirit. Okay? Bakit hindi natin hayaang magsalita ang Holy Spirit sa atin continually? Pero ito yung catch dyan eh. If the revelation of the Holy Spirit is still continuing, then that means that the revelation in the Scripture is not yet complete. Tama po ba? Kasi kung madadagdagan pa siya, ibig sabihin, hindi pa kumpleto. Ngayon, kung dadagdagan natin siya, bakit tayo mag- maghihintay ng agent of revelation na mas lesser kay Jesus Christ? So that is the point of the sufficiency of the Scripture. I'm still in my first point. So pupunta na po ako sa second point at bibilisan ko na kasi alam ko pong naiinip na po kayo. So let's go to the second point. The sufficiency in the Son and in the Scripture. I would like to say that in Jesus Christ, two concepts overlap. And these two concepts are revelation and redemption. Revelation and redemption. Why? Because the reason why God is revealing to us His Word is so that the people of God will know His great plan of redemption. Hindi po nagre-reveal si God sa atin ng Bible para tumalino tayong lahat. Hindi po tayo binigyan ng Old Testament and New Testament para lahat tayo ay maging nerd. Ang purpose po niyan is so that we will be redeemed. We will be saved and later on, we will be able to live according to God's will. Pero po, yung redemption na ina-apply sa atin ni God is accomplished through what? Through revelation. So hindi po natin pwedeng paghiwalayin yung dalawang concept because redemption reveals while revelation redeems. Ulitin ko lang po ah. Redemption reveals while revelation redeems. And in Jesus Christ, we can see the fulfillment and the finality of both the revelation and the, redemp- the redemption. Because all of the things that were prophesied, the types, the rituals in the Old Testament, was, has found its fulfillment in Christ. And the work of redemption was finished in Christ as well. Pero sige, balikan natin yung usual na argument or na tanong na may encounter natin sa mga taong hindi naniniwala sa sufficiency of the Scriptures. So, Brother Ed, kung sinasabi mo sa amin na hindi na dapat dagdagan ang Scriptures, are you saying that God is no longer speaking to us today? Is God no longer speaking to us today? Well, the answer is definitely not. God is continuously speaking to us today. But the catch is, continuing communication does not mean continuing revelation. Magkaiba po yun. God still speaks to us today, but we must be careful on thinking in what way is He speaking to us today. At ang sabi nga sa atin ng Hebrews 1, 1-4 is that He has spoken through the Son. At kung mapapansin niyo po, yung spoken ay what tense? It is past tense. So meaning to say, tapos na, nakompleto na po yung revelation, nakompleto na po yung redemption. At ang ginagawa na lang ni God is, He is speaking through His finished work. So, it's a false dichotomy, actually. Pag sinabi nila sa atin na, oh, hindi na madadagdagan ng Bible, so ibig sabihin, hindi na nagsasalita ang Diyos. It doesn't follow. God is still talking to us, but continuing communication does not mean continuing revelation. Because God is continually speaking to His people through the finished work and revelation of Christ. So now, how are we going to apply it to our lives? Now that we know that the scriptures is sufficient. First of all, napahapyawan ko na po kanina. Because scriptures is sufficient, we must put tradition in its proper place. Nagkakaroon nga lang po tayo kasi minsan ng extremes. Like for example, the Roman Catholics, they are through two extremes in a way na nilevel nila yung tradition to the level of the scriptures. Kaya sinasabi nila kung ano yung maging decision ng church is as binding as the scriptures in our lives. Ngayon naman tayo mga reform na nininiwala sa sufficiency of the scriptures, ang nagiging extreme naman sa atin minsan is that kapag narinig natin yung term na tradition, natatakot tayo kasama na po yung apokripa. Diba? Narinig yung apokripa. Ay, 
Huwag yan, Brother Ed. Inilagay ng mga Catholic yan dyan para guluhin yung mga doktrina natin. Hindi po ganun. Sa totoo lang po, kapag nagbasa po kayo ng mga, commenta- mga commentaries, ng mga sikat na commentators, most of the time, they are also making reference to the Apocrypha. Why? Because traditions are not to be shunned away. We must just put them in their proper place. And their proper place is to guide us and to aid us in the interpretation of the scriptures. But the moment tradition introduces a new doctrine that contraries or that contradicts the doctrines of the scriptures, then that is the time that we must make our mind. Sino ba ang paniniwalaan natin? Tradition or scriptures? That's why we must not entertain the doctrine of papal inerrancy or yung veneration of Mary at yung iba pang yung doctrine of the purgatory. Because these things came from tradition and they contradict the clear teachings of the scriptures. And because scripture is sufficient, we should not act or subtract to the word of God. When we are reading the scriptures, we should always remember that we are reading a covenantal book. At kapag yung binabasa po natin ay covenantal book, it follows that it has covenantal inscriptions. At yung covenantal inscriptions na yon ay bababasa natin sa Deuteronomy 4.2, yung binasa po natin kanina. But the other one is found in Revelations 22.18-19, which says, I warn everyone who hears this book, who hears the words of this prophecy, of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book, of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. So, hindi po tayo dapat magdagdag o magbawas sa scriptures. Pero minsan, hindi naman tayo nagdadagdag at nagbabawas sa scriptures. Yun nga lang, naghahanap tayo ng ibang sources na ginagawa nating ka-level ng scriptures. Yun po yung ginawa ko nung, ginawa, nung kumuha ko ng transcript nung uh, program nung tatlong prophet na aking napakinggan. So let us not do that. And since the Bible is sufficient, we can expect that the Word of God is relevant to all of our lives. Because the Bible is sufficient, it is enough to go to the scriptures to know kung paano ba maging mabuting asawa, paano ba maging mabuting anak, maging mabuting parent, maging mabuting minister, maging mabuting employees. Ang ginagawa kasi natin minsan, kapag ang usapan is about religion, we go to the Bible. Pero kapag secular things, or partly religious and secular things, like raising a child, ang ginagawa natin, pumupunta tayo sa national bookstore, at nagbabasa po tayo ng mga self-help books. Which I'm not saying na mali. Ang sinasabi ko lang po, again, the Bible is sufficient. So sana, ang una nating pinupuntahan ay ano bang sinabi ng Bible about parenting? Bago natin alamin kung anong sinabi ni Ofra about parenting, o anong sinabi ni Tony Gonzaga o ni Alex Gonzaga about parenting. Because we have the perfect, sufficient Word of God. And it is relevant in our daily lives. And lastly, for those who do not know Christ yet, and the salvation that He brings, and even those who already heard of Christ, pero hindi pa nila sure kung talagang saved na ba sila, I invite you to open the pages of the Scriptures. Because that is the very purpose of the pages of the Scriptures, to give us the revelation for redemption. We don't need to go any further. You don't need to chase strange blessings or words of God from conferences led by prophets. You have the Word of God in your hands. You have the Bible. Open your Bible and read it. Sa mga susunod na episodes na series ng ating, uh, sa susunod na sermon series natin, we will talk about the clarity of the Scriptures. Meaning to say, yung Scriptures, yes, mahirap siyang pag-aralan, pero kaya siyang maintindihan at basahin ng isang normal na tao. So if a normal person opens the pages, pages of the Scriptures and reads it, he can be saved. He can be saved. So hindi na po natin kailangang maghanap pa ng iba. So CCRC Imus, long time ago, in many times and in many ways, 
God spoke to our fathers through the angels and prophets. But now in these last days, He has spoken to us through His Supreme Son. In Christ is the fulfillment and finality of redemption and revelation. That's why we can be sure that the written Word of God is sufficient for our salvation and for our practice of our faith. So let us come to God's Word with reverence and awe, and let us no longer look anymore for so-called fresh revelation, because God's Word is enough. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for reminding us that your Word is enough for our salvation and for helping us living a Christian life. We pray, God, that you examine our hearts kung meron nang part ng mga puso namin na isinasantabi yung sufficiency ng salita mo. May you make us realize that the Bible is given to us by your Son, by the supreme agent of revelation and the supreme revelation himself. So help us to have reverence in your word, to have trust in your word, and to always go to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.